Oh yes, it's that time. It's time for the back nine at TPC Scottsdale. Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and another episode here on Terminator Golf. Like I said, I'm out in Scottsdale, Arizona, back nine at TPC Scottsdale. Coming off four bogeys on that front nine to finish it off, it was a little bit of a rough patch for me. So I was looking here on the 10th hole to really get a drive right down the middle of the fairway and split all of those bunkers that you see down the right and left hand side. Well, we're gonna aim left, open up our feet and just let it go. The big cut, I mean, that's not a slice, that's a big cut right down Broadway, right in between the bunkers and leave myself a full 120 yard gap wedge into this front hole location. Now 120 yards for me is typically pushing a gap wedge 100% and when I do so, I've been pushing wedges to the right. Something I'm trying to manage here by not hitting wedges 100% anymore. More of that to come soon. You know, I carry a 64 degree wedge in my bag and that is my lob wedge. Makes shots like this a little bit easier for me. I can just open up the club and activate the bounce there on the wedge, flopping those bunker shots right up to the green out here to a makeable distance. Now I readjusted my ball there because I've been seeing a little bit more break than I've been uh, putting all day. So kind of cut down the break a little bit. This one for bar. And I'm able to nail that one. Save the up and down, a little bit of a sandy par to start the back nine, and we're onto the hardest hole that we're gonna see all day. Water all down the left-hand side, left is dead. So let's trust that cut one more time. You just gotta put 100% trust in a shot, and if you know you got it, it bled off to the right-hand side here, and, uh, Left myself an 8-iron. This would typically be a 7-iron back home out here in the desert. That ball is flying a long, long way. And I tugged this 8-iron just a little bit. This landed here on the green and rolled off the back. And man, I thought it was lost into absolute oblivion. Luckily, there was a little bit of rough cut right down at the bottom of the hill. And that saved this thing from going into a watery, watery grave. Now let's take a fortunate break and turn it into something here. Hitting a good wedge up here to close. Let's tap in another one for back to back up and down pars. Ooh, that one just kept on sliding on down towards the water. That's all right, it's another bogey. Dropping myself to four over par and we're facing here at the 12th hole. Now this par three here, 206 yards is gonna be playing a full six iron for me and it's really, really skinny down there. I mean, it was absolutely uncomfortably skinny for me. Look at that thing. Bunkers left, water right, narrow, narrow green, long iron. Well, that's a tug for me. A tug right down into the brush and into the water. I dropped here on the edge of the native and uh, hitting three, trying to get up and down for bogey. Now, here's the one thing that I try to avoid more than anything. Compound mistakes. Cannot make one mistake on top of another on the same golf hole. Okay, so we're gonna splash it out. I actually hit a really good bunker shot there. Now let's just tap this in for bogey. Avoid a really big number. Oh boy, oh boy. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Oh, compound mistakes. Can't let those happen. Let's just put it in the past. As you see there, I took a big, deep breath. I was borderline angry golf here. At the same time, let's just go power golf. I set up for the big draw this time. No more of that little fade. Let's bomb it. And 
And sometimes we don't even need to watch it fly. You just drive down the middle of the fairway, and you know it's going to be right there. 225 yards into this hole. It's going to be a full, full 5-iron. And I'm um, sitting on a little bit of a weird lie, kind of a bumpy fairway here. So really had to catch it. Really did my best to turn that thing over, trying to get my right side through the golf ball as best as possible. And unfortunately, still push that one over onto the right hand side. It's all right. I like getting up and down for birdie. It's a nice thing to have to do. As you can see, the pin sitting here in a little bit of a bowl. I thought I played a halfway decent shot. Oh man, we've been seeing this length putt all day, haven't we? All right, but this one's for birdie. So. Let's make the most of it. Oh, it does go right. Oh, man. Man, that would have been great to bounce off that triple bogey with a birdie. Everyone saw that just a different break. It was really funky, that, that front of the green there with that little bit of the bowl. 14 here is a skinny, skinny hole, and it's really, really long as well. Got a big berm off the right hand side. I could just see thousands of people off on the right hand side during the tournament. That could be really cool. Tried to turn this one over as well and got it going. Uh, just a little bit of a push. That's all right though. It's uh, sitting here in the first cut. Let's take a six iron, smash it on the green. Now this green was sitting elevated up, uh, definitely a, way up the hill there, and it was uh, kind of middle left as well aired off to the right hand side didn't want to miss short left in those bunkers that would have been dead and I gave myself a halfway decent chance of getting up and down here as you can see under me though it's super soggy they definitely overwater the course in some places just got to do your best to square up those wedges use the bounce on the club get, open up the club face just a little bit on those tight lies and uh, just sweep right under, under right on under it like you're using a putter almost that's kind of my philosophy Oh man, but when you hit it close, if you can putt it in, there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to take the bogey and move on. Now in front of us, we have the famous finishing four holes. Water all down the left-hand side of this par five, but it is reachable, even though there's an island green down there. Now I've been turning over that draw, but oh, I was definitely afraid of turning it over too much and got a little lazy with the lower half. Pushed it on out to the right, hit off the berm, and kicked on down right next to the cart path here. But that's nothing but trouble right in front of me. So yes, I have to lay up. Oh, I have to lay up. Pitching wedge over the free, over the trees here. Leave myself a full wedge. 111, nice. I'm able to knock down a gap wedge. Pin was sitting up on a shelf on the very back of the green. Got this ball to check up, pin high, and it started drifting down off the slope ever closer to the hole. Thought it was right on top of it, but you got up there and it was behind it. And uh, definitely a slippery right to left putt here for Birdie. Not that much, dang. Oh, it'd be nice to make a Birdie here on the back nine. But a par on the island green. All right, everybody, we're here. We're at the 16th hole stadium, of course. The goat. Let's see how we do. Here we go. It is pretty tame. I mean, it looks just like a nine iron. A nine iron indeed, uh, 162 playing down the hill. It was actually a 157 adjusted. It's just a smooth nine iron and it was to a front flag. So with a nine iron flying about 165 today, no worries, middle of the green here. On the green. I'm not getting booed, am I? 
I can only imagine what it could feel like with 15 to 20,000 people surrounding you, giving you nothing but cheers because all you had to do is hit the green. Now, could you imagine the roars if this putt dropped? I bet you those roars were turned the booze after they saw it run that far by. But ultimately, hopefully just a nice golf clap from the crowd for the nice two putt par. And we're on to the drivable 17th hole. So let's take that driver out. Give it all we got. The only thing we have to avoid is that little finger of water on the left hand side of the green. Oh boy, okay, so I tried to hit the cut here and it was a double cross. So I looked down there and... That's gonna be close, we'll see. Now, thank God there were no grandstands because this would be up on the deck, up on the party deck. Luckily, there's grass over here for me. Let's get this up and down for birdie. Fight, fight, fight. Not too bad, but it did roll out a little bit more than I wanted to. I mean, hey, that was off of a downhill lie out of the rough. I'll take what I can get, and I'm just happy to have a birdie putt. No, 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 no. I want to make one. I really do. Sitting here at eight over, eight over par. Oh, boy, I got to make a par better to break 80 now. And uh, this closing hole, boy. It is just absolutely gorgeous. One of the coolest finishing holes I've played in a long, long time. Those church pew bunkers down the left-hand side, about 340 yards to clear. Come on, baby, fly! We'll see. Here on the 18th hole at the stadium course, this bunker right here, it's... 305 yards to reach it. It's 340 yards to clear it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Here we go. I flew this bunker. That's pretty good. 120 yards to the flag. 120 yards? Well, it was actually about 110. Had to choke down on a gap wedge once again, as this pin was all the way back there. Didn't want to go long. There we go. Let's give ourselves one last look at Birdie. can't do it oh lord <sighs> well everybody that's the end of my Arizona vacation specials here from Greyhawk talking stick and here at TPC Scottsdale stadium course it's pretty fun I'll be honest with you it is a lot more fun than the PGA West stadium course that's just a brute this guy this has got a lot of, a lot of fun out there I'd be really happy to come back out here and try and break par. I think it's possible. I really do. I really do. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Later.